Now, I want to say as I go into this last story of the week that we should be putting in place a, a, some form of trigger warning before we get into this. I've had to watch it a couple of times and it's been uncomfortable for me, but of course, I'm going to still sit here and bring the news and bring the perspective on it. But even me and my wife we were looking at it earlier. It is quite difficult, but we're going to sit here and cover the story. Here we go straight into it. And why it's so 115. Let's let bring some sound in. Very disturbing attack inside of an RTC bus that was caught on video. Tonight, our eight news now investigators digging into why that bus did not stop for several minutes as an accused murderer repeatedly stabs his victim. Now, the video shows the attacker. Oh, I'll try to pause it. Then stop for minutes, at least five minutes, kept driving while this man was being attacked. Stabbing that man, sitting down, minutes later getting up, doing it again all as the bus doors still remained closed. A News Now investigator David Sharns uncovering details about the accused murderer's past and why days earlier he was deemed a low, low risk to reoffend. Brian Denise, we do want to warn you these videos are disturbing to both see and hear. 30 year old Dominique Lucas pleads for help and tries to get off the bus, but the driver doesn't stop for nearly five minutes and no one helps him for several minutes after that as he lies on the ground with nobody in this, in this generation of everything is phone, phone out, phone out, phone out. Nobody helps anymore. Like you say, gift and a curse for a lot of these things. Nobody helps anymore. Because in all honesty, who, who's to say what to say? People on the bus, I guess they have to think about their life and safety just like everybody else. But if everyone came together to try and help this man, maybe I won't be covering this story. 33 stab wounds. Video from inside this RTC bus captures 30-year-old Dominique Lucas and the man accused of killing him, sitting just inches away from each other on Sunday, February 26th. I wasn't bothering you. There's some kind of argument. Seconds later, Cole lunges at Lucas. Let me up. Let me up. Police say Cole stabbed Lucas multiple times. He then sits back down. Lucas then asks the bus driver, who hit a panic button, for help. We're blurring Lucas due to the extent. Yo, and then he ended up turning his back to this crazy dude, too. And you got to, when you're being attacked, you got to always try to keep your eyes as much. Because as soon as you turn your back, you're, late, you're uh, putting yourself at risk of the, the inevitable kind of, you know, situation. So I really hated to see these kind of things that we progressed through this video, too. End of his injuries. Oh, man, come on. We don't, you want to get out the bus? Two minutes. After the initial attack, video shows Cole getting back up and stabbing Lucas several more times, the bus continuing its route before it finally stops on Paradise near Desert Inn. According to transcripts, the driver told I'm not mistaken, and that blurb there was the man who has who has suffered. It, in that blurb, we were, when we were watching this earlier, that's what it looked like—a blurred out, a, a blurred. If you uh, run the tape, the grand jury he kept the doors closed for the safety of the victim. and other passengers, a juror asking him if it's procedure to intervene. Is it protocol in regard to helping someone out when they get stabbed or injured? For the driver to help? Yes. Physically? Yes. For the driver to help physically? Not that I know of. I mean, the first priority is your own safety, so I've got to make sure I'm safe enough to operate that bus for the other passengers also. So he's saying that, you no, know, it's not my obligation to go out there physically. It could be a grandmother that this was happening to, but he's not supposed to, give or take, get out there. And he needs to operate the bus to get everyone else who's not involved in whatever's taking place to safety is what that bus driver got on there and said. But in all honesty, we can't. Um, I like I said, it's kind of weird there. So we're going to be asking for a preliminary hearing in about 30 days. As the 8 News Now investigators reported earlier this month, Cole served 23 years in a Texas prison on an attempted murder charge. Documents revealing he shot a person in October 1994. The week before Lucas's murder, Metro Police arrested Cole for allegedly waving a knife at a family also on an RTC bus. The 8 News Now was on a bus just another week a week ago doing the same type of thing to a family waving a knife and somehow he wasn't arrested he was not put on no type of watch list that you can't bring your black ass back on the bus list none of that none of that 
Now, investigators obtaining this pre-trial risk assessment handed to a judge, deeming him a low risk. The document incorrectly includes a conviction for murder, but that conviction did not affect his risk score since it happened more than 10 years ago. The judge setting bail at $3,000. Bail Cole paid three days before this attack. So you can Everybody involved, whoever did the risk assessment, the assessment, the jail, the judge, um, everyone involved with this will be getting a, uh, that family, everyone from involved from all the way down that line will have a suit going up. The, the, the bus company, everybody's getting a lawsuit. No way they looked at this man and whatever the test is, if, if there's a test out there that leads these type of dudes to get free, we need to say we got to do a review of that test and what's on that test that says that you are a low risk person, even if he old and got gray in his face. There are some behavior traits that you would just know that you would just know and there's no way of disguising them even uh, 20 years later. You can understand why the victim's family is asking why it took so long for the bus to stop. A spokesperson for Keolis, the company that operates that RTC bus, says that the bus was in the left lane and that it would have been unsafe for the victim or other passengers if the driver had opened the doors. That spokesperson also saying the bus can't move if the doors are open and they needed to get over to a safer spot. From our count, it took almost four minutes for the bus to stop and seven minutes before someone came to Lucas's aid. I'm David Charnes, 8 News Now. And we can also tell you tonight that a judge denying bail for Cole. Right now he is in jail, awaiting his next court appearance, which the court has not yet scheduled. Of course he's sitting in jail. This is where he was supposed to be from the get, from the get go. But I don't think that from the time, I do believe in with the doors. Doors don't open when the, when the bus is going. Doors don't open when the bus is going. Got that part. But let's not say that it could take five minutes to go from the, the left lane all the way over to the, uh, the lane to get, get this man some help, followed by seven more minutes it took for anybody to help him. Dog, the screams from the video is just an, another example. Like, screams from the video just show the terror of somebody just trying to get off the bus. I'm surprised he didn't jaw the driver or something in that type of angle. I know a lot of dudes that probably would have, but in all honesty, put that aggression need to be towards Cole, who is now going to spend the rest of his life. Now our tax dollar got to go to taking care of this bum for the rest of his life when they should have gave him the chair or something like that. But it's, it's still, you know what I'm saying, it's still unfortunate overall because here it is, another black man, uh, older black man, this younger black man who's going about his day. No argument is worth taking somebody's life like that. And no, no argument is worth uh, uh, poking somebody 33 times. You know what I'm saying? No, there should there should be no state, no no state, no test. Like I said, this the lawsuits that they this family bring down should like ring across the country because there's no way that the assessment was done and said that uh, that Uncle Ruckers, uh, not Uncle Ruckers, uh, Stink Mina, all, all these different characters I've seen throughout my childhood looking type of dude, they said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you good to go. Let him go and be free. There's no absolute way. Let me know y'all thoughts on this story. I told y'all from the jump before I even got started. Horrible, horrible situation. But let me know your thoughts on it uh, below in the comments on YA Show. Appreciate y'all.